for the second part. Okay. So M stands for media. Oh, welcome back, first of all. I gotta get in the habit of this. So it's 12.01, so we have about 30 minutes here to look at my math lab and to talk about chapter one skills review. So the M stands for media. M things do not count towards your grade. I usually load a whole bunch of stuff there that can also be found over here under multimedia library. But I just load them in here for each chapter so that uh, just for easy access. Then if I don't cover something uh, in a way that you understand, or if I don't cover it thoroughly enough, or you want to go slower or just get another viewpoint, then you can, this will be a place where you can look at a, find a PowerPoint or a video or go to the textbook and look over it yourself. Another place, if you want to look at the textbook, if you go over here to chapter contents, I'm going to click on chapter contents and I'm going to show you how you can access that. Um, integrated review, I'm not sure. Nah. I don't, I don't really, I don't know that that's going to be helpful, but for chapter, okay, there it is. So for chapter one, integrated review, that's going to be the basic skills stuff, like what the quizzes are over. And then you can go to a section, any section you want to, and notice you can watch a video presentation or read the book or work in the, working in the study plan is just practicing on problems. I'm going to go back. The main thing you'll usually do is you'll go to assignments. And today I'm going to talk about this chapter one skills review. Now I'm not going to, well, actually I will click on it. Just let's do some real simple stuff. Okay. So when I click on it, let's do question one together. If you've never used my stat lab or my math lab before, this is what the questions look like. I'm going to enlarge this. This one, this is a pie chart, which we'll learn more about in um, chapter two, I believe it is. But this question says, which meal has about 50% of the total daily calories? That should be about half. And you can kind of see that the piece of the pie, the only thing that takes up about half of the pie is the yellow one, which is dinner. And so I can come down here on that drop down and choose dinner. Now, what I want to point out to you, though, this is not a hard question, but I want to point out this up here. The upper right-hand corner of every question is a thing that says question help. And there will be different things available there. So if you uh, help me solve this, helps you solve that particular problem, and then it gives you another problem to work for credit. You can click on view an example and it will show you an example like the one you're working on, but not the same one. And then you come back and do yours. Stat crunch, don't worry about for now. I would never do ask my instructor because that sends me a really super weird email that's impossible for me to respond to. And um, then print would be if you wanted to print off a copy of it, but most people don't do that unless they're like coming to class and they want to show it to me. So that's a quick view of what you will see in my math lab. And then so I would pick on mine, it looks like dinner accounts for about 50% of the total calories. Then I can check my answer. I think I can check my answer. Okay, so I got it right. I'm going to close that so I can show you some other stuff. And it looks like I have, notice I then have the choice of doing a similar question down here at the bottom, so I can do a different one. Now the question is asking which meal has about 25% of the total calories. So I'm looking for the meal that's about a fourth, you know, 25% or a quarter of the circle, which on mine would be lunch. If I answer incorrectly, let's say I say dinner again, which is like half, not a quarter. When I check the answer, it says, no, you're wrong. So it tells me I'm wrong. But notice I still have a green check. That's because I got this right once. Once you get it right, it's right. 
and you get unlimited tries at every question. And then you can save this attempt or save your best score. Uh, doesn't matter. So that brings me back to here. And now next time I come to this, I can redo question one or I can do any of the questions that I want to do. Now, um, I'm going to go over a few things that are in this. Chapter one, skills review. So this is the lecture part of the class. So we're going to actually work problems here. Now, these are not going to be statistics problems. We're doing skills review right now. So we're preparing for chapter one. We're going to go over some basic math skills that will be handy in, sorry about that noise. Um, what's that? Hold on just a second. Christina, you're saying you can't see anything on the Pearson examples. You can only hear. Okay. Um, so I don't know if they will sh it will show up on the recording or not, but I'm not going to do that on the Pearson side. Can everybody see these examples now that I have pulled up as a document? It says change a percent to the fraction? Yes. Yes. See that? Yes. Okay. Great. Okay, so um, these are questions like the ones in my math lab, and I do have trouble sometimes with being in an application and it's showing like it's supposed to. So that's why I just made a PDF of these, of some questions. This is an example of some questions. And again, remember, you can click on that little magnifying glass in the upper left hand corner if you want to make it bigger which I will do because my eyes are not great and I'm going to make mine a little, see if it'll make it a little bigger. Now remember when I make mine bigger on here, it doesn't make yours bigger. So you have to choose, you have to make yours the size that you want. And on the recording, um, it's, it's going to be whatever size it is. All right. So let's do a few problems here. These will be from the chapter one skills review. Um, hopefully, if you have any questions while you're in my math lab, I will stay on the session for a little bit after class is over today so that if you're having any issues, I will do my best to help you with that. So let's look at this first one. This first topic is to change a percent to a fraction. So I have this. I'm going to write it bigger. And it says to change this to a fraction. Now, when you're talking about percents, I'm going to use percents, decimal, fraction, okay, PDF. And I want you to think of it in terms of when you're switching from one form through to another, the easiest thing is usually to go through the decimal. So we're going to think of the decimal as our home base. Now, changing a percent to a decimal is going to involve just moving the decimal point. So uh, if it's a percent, the number's always bigger. So this is going to look like the biggest number of all of them, the percent is. Beautiful writing. OK, so I'm going to change it to a decimal. That means I'm going to make it smaller. Percent means out of 100. To change a percent to a decimal, basically, if you look at that percent symbol, do you see it's sort of like divided by? Do you see the divided by? And those two zeros are 100. So it's like you're dividing by 100, which means you're going to move the decimal place point two places to the left. You're going to make the number smaller. So when I move that decimal point two places to the left, that will give me point zero zero eight now notice I dropped the percent I moved the decimal point two places to the left one two filled in with a zero and now that I've moved it I've made it into a decimal number I dropped the percent so this is the decimal version 
Now let's change that to the fraction. Remember, we're thinking of decimal as our home base now, but the question asked me to change it to a fraction. So the way I do it, change a decimal to a fraction, is I basically read it. So 0 0.008, the real way to read that would be to say that that's 8 one thousandths. One. And the way you know what the denominator is, is you count how many numbers there are, where, how many places to the right that 8 is, and that's how many zeros should be after the 1. So you see that 8 is 3 to the right. So notice I put 1, 2. I put one, two, three zeros, one, two, three places. Now, I've got it changed to a fraction. Eight over a thousand is a fraction, but it's not in lowest terms. To change it to lowest terms, I need to divide by, the, by a common factor. So I might start by dividing by two or dividing by four. I, I know they both divide by two and four. Sometimes I divide, just keep dividing by 2 until it's small enough so I can see what it is. So to, to reduce, so what I'm doing now is I'm reducing this fraction to lowest terms. I'm just going to divide by 2 on the top and the bottom. And that would give me 4 over 500. Well, those will still divide by 2, so I've got to keep going. If I divide by 2 again, I get 2 over 250. Well, those will divide by 2 again. So if I divide by 2, I get 1 out of 125. And now I'm done, and that would be the final fraction. Now, you'll be able to see this on the recording, but in a minute I'm going to hit the eraser, and it's going to erase all of this. Okay, let's go to number 2. Any questions on that one? Okay, number two. So I'm going to erase that. Well, actually, I think I'm going to do something different here. I'm just going to er Oops, sorry. <laughs> Erasing is not an easy thing on this. So what we're going to say here on that one was we changed it to a decimal, and then we need to reduce it to lowest terms. Okay, let's go to number two. It says change a percent to a decimal. So here we have 93.476% and it wants me to change it to a decimal. Well, we just did that. We changed a percent to a fraction and we went through a decimal on the way. To go, remember to go from a percent, to go from a percent to a decimal. We're going smaller because the percent is the biggest. So we're going to divide by 100. Which that tells us to do. The percent sign tells us to divide by 100. So when we divide by 100, we're going to move the decimal point two places to the left. And that will give us a final answer of 0.9. Three, four, seven, six. I'm going to give that whole answer unless my math lab tells me to round. <clears throat> if they ask me to round this to the nearest hundredth, just as an example, the hundredth place is the second place. If I wanted to round this, it would round to 0.93. And just as a reminder, when you're rounding, you look at the next number, and if it's five or bigger, you round up one. And if it's, in this case, the number after the hundredths place is a four, so I kept the three. Now, if it doesn't say to round, though, then you're not going to do this. You're just going to keep the whole thing. 
Okay, I'm going to erase this. Okay, remember we have, um, so we're going to number three. I'm going to put my little thing here. Remember that we have percent to decimal, fraction to decimal. Remember, decimal is home base. <clears throat> On this one, it says to change a decimal to a percent. So notice on this one, remember this, the percent number is the biggest number of them all. So remember when we went from a percent to a decimal, we divided by 100. So to go from decimal to a percent, we're going to multiply by 100. Okay, so when I multiply by 100, that means I'm going to move the decimal point two places to the right. One, two. That would make it 24. You don't need that leading zero. And now I'm going to add the percent sign because 0.24 obviously isn't equal to 24. It's equal to 24%. And let's box this. And you need to get in that habit when you're showing your work is to box or circle your final answer. So temperance, I see you asked, you said you didn't see the symbols list. I think maybe I haven't moved it over yet. I don't think you're overlooking it. Thank you for reminding me. And if you don't mind, when you notice something like that, go ahead and send me an email because that really helps me to get a reminder like that. I don't want to forget. Okay, let's look at this next one. This next one is changing a fraction to a percent. So we're going, we're going to go all the way from, remember, we have our percent, decimal, on base, fraction. So we're going to go all the way from fraction to a percent, but we're going to stop always at the decimal. So we're going to put, change it to a decimal first, and then it will be very easy to change to a percent. Now, you're going to need a calculator to do some of these. So when you see, in this one it's 17 over 33. That means exactly what it says. It means 17 divided by 33. And when you do what it says, a fraction is nothing more than division. When you do what it says, 17 divided by 33, I'm doing this in my calculator, guys. This is what I get. I get 0. 0.5151. It's five ones forever, okay? 515151. Well, I can't, I can't enter a uh, million, you know, an infinite number of numbers, my math lab will tell you what to round to. So I'm going to make up some rounding rules on this. Now this is the decimal at this point, but notice it didn't tell me to change it to a decimal. It told me to change it to a percent, which means I still have to go from decimal to percent. Remember going from decimal to percent, we need to multiply by a hundred and that little sign there doesn't look very clear. And then to go from percent to decimal, you divide by 100. So decimal to percent, we're going to make the number bigger. So we're going to move the decimal point to the right. And so that's going to give me, if I move it two places to the right, 51.5151. Percent, and those five ones repeat forever. So um, let's suppose um, my math lab asked us to round this to the nearest hundredth. The hundredths place means you know a hundred has two zeros in it, so to go two places, that one right there is in the hundredths place. 
So that means you're either going to keep the 1 or you're going to change it to a 2. Everything after the rounding place is going to drop. Since the very next number, all you look at is the very next number under the rounding place, and since it's 5 or bigger, that means we are going to round up. So we're going to say this is about equal to, squiggly equals means approximately. So we're going to say is our final answer 51.52%. And if you leave that percent sign off, it would be wrong. Because 0 .5151 is not equal to 51.52, but it is equal to, or approximately equal to, 51.52%. So that would be our final answer. Okay. And by the way, remember, uh, you will also, on some of these, you'll be able to, uh, when you're in my math lab, remember you've got those question helps, the little help hamburger, and you'll be able to view an example or help me solve this. And uh, some of them have videos, too, that you can access. I'm going to erase this, and we are going to go to page 2. Which is a little bit different. These three do adding signed numbers. Now, I'm going to show you. This doesn't come up a whole lot in statistics because there aren't a lot of negative numbers in statistics. Statistics is about looking at real data, which isn't doesn't very frequently involve negative numbers. But when it does, we need to know what they mean. So I want to show you, you're going to have a question like each of these three. So I want to show you how to do all three, even though they look like the same exact kind of question. So I want to show you what they what they want you to write on this. So in the box in my math lab, it says this are the instructions. It says eliminate the double signs in the expression. By double signs, we mean like here we have a plus and a minus. Here we have two minuses, two negatives in front of 17, two negatives in front of five. Do you see every number has two signs in front of it except the first one? And I'm going to mark down. I'm going to put equals. That first one you're going to bring down. If the two signs in front of a number are different, then that's going to be minus. If the two signs in front of a number are the same, it will become plus. So where you see those two minus signs in front of right here, you see these two minus signs in front of the 17? That's like a double negative. That means the opposite of a negative, which means that's going to be plus 17. Okay, what will the next one be? Will the 5 be plus 5 or minus 5? You can turn on your mics and talk. Plus 5? Plus. Yes, very good. Plus 5. Okay, what about the 8? Should it be plus 8 or minus 8? Minus. Good. And the 11? Minus. Minus. Now, if all it says, notice the instructions, eliminate the double signs. And I believe in my math lab it also says not to evaluate. This is what they want, guys. They don't want you to do anything with it. They just want you to change the double signs to single signs. Very easy. Because if they're different, you put a minus. And if they're the same, you put a plus. Everybody got it? Okay, so let's look at this next one. On this next one, it's really just like that last one, except they didn't put any double signs. Everything's got a single sign. On this one, notice it says combine the positive terms and combine the negative terms. So what they want you to do, let's do the positive. I'm going to underline all the positive ones in blue. Those would be the ones that have either no sign or a plus sign in front of them. Do you all see how I underlined all the ones with a plus sign in front or no sign like the 25? If you don't see any sign, it's positive. And so what they want you to do is they want you to add all those positives first. So I'm going to add them in my calculator because I don't add well in my head. 25 plus 33 plus 36 plus 4 plus 19. And that gives me a positive sum of 117. That's what all the positives add up to. Then let's do this in a different color. I'll do the negatives in red. 
So I have, oops, sorry. Red, 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 and that zero is red is negative, but zero that's not going to do anything. So I, I actually can kind of just I can just ignore that. So these are all going to be minus. So we're going to add a bunch of negatives and get a negative sum. So we're finding out the total that we're subtracting. So I'm basically, even though they're all negative, I'm, I'm basically adding them together, the 35, the 12, and the 5. And I think that's it. And that gives me 52. But that 52, all of those were negative. So that's 52 that we take away, not 52 that we add, because all of those numbers were subtracted. And then on this question, when they say it like this, this is all they want for the answer. They don't want you to combine it, find the final answer if they say this. And then they're going to give you one where they want you to do both of those steps. And that's what this last example. So on this last one, um, I don't know if you're like me, but it bothers me to leave those like that. It's like, well, why don't you just go ahead and find the answer? But it doesn't ask you for the answer on those two. But on this one, it will. Notice it says add by using the rules for addition of integers, which means they want us to do these two steps. They want us to eliminate double signs. Then they want us to add the positives and add the negatives. And this time we get to actually find the answer. So let's first eliminate any double signs. OK, that 20 is negative. The 34 only has one sign. Should the 29 be a plus or a minus? I'm waiting on you. Minus. Minus. OK, I decided I'm going to do the negative ones in red. OK, so minus 29. That 14 only has one sign in front of it, so it stays the same. That four has two signs in front of it, so I need to write it with one sign. What should the one sign be? Minus. Very good. OK, so that was step one, is to get rid of any double signs that you see. Step two, we're going to add the positives. So 34 plus 14 is 48. I did that in my head. Isn't that exciting? And then um, I'm going to add the, the negative ones, these red ones. And that will give me my total negative sum. I'm going to try to do that in my head. No, I have a little bit of it. So that's 49.53. Would you guys double check? Does everybody agree that those would add up to 53? You can raise your hand or you can talk, either one. Do you think I got the right thing? Did I add my positives and negatives correctly? Thank you, Temperance. OK. So now I'm going to do 48 minus 53. Now notice I'm taking a bigger number away from a smaller number. Does anybody have an idea of what that's going to give me for a final answer? What's that going to do to the final answer on this? It's going to what? It's going to be say a that? negative number. It's going to be a negative, right? That was Kayla, right? It's going to be a negative number. And you can actually put that in your calculator, 48 minus 53. It will give you the negative number. It's going to give you negative 5. Did I do that right? I did it in my head. I didn't do it in my calculator. By the way, never do it in your head. Don't do what I do. Do what's right. Do it in your calculator. <laughs> did I do it right, guys? Did you do it in your calculator? 48 minus 53. Is that negative 5? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Terrific. OK, so that just means we had more negative stuff there than we had positive. And so the final outcome was negative. So if these were points in a game, we lost points instead of gaining points. We gained 48 but lost 53. Glad they don't do that in basketball. Did you all see the Mavericks game yesterday, by the way? Oh, my goodness. OK, so I'm a basketball fan. Um. So you got those. That's all I have for you for examples for um, the chapter one skills review quiz. It has about 16 questions. It shouldn't take you very long. This is basically as hard as it gets, except for some of those changing fractions, 
to percents or percents to fractions. It may take a little bit of time. Make sure you show your work on your paper. I know you're doing this online, but when you take a test, I'm going to be asking you to show your work. And so you need to practice doing that. I at least do it on paper and box your final answer. Any questions? And we are done for today, guys. Um, if you have a question, I'll answer it. If not, I will see you on Wednesday. Be sure and complete this, and I will try to get that the symbols list up for you on uh, in Blackboard. In your, I'll put it in the Unit One folder. So every all the handouts that you that I expect you to print off or look at will always be in the under Lessons in the Unit folder to which they belong. Thank you guys for coming. I think I'm going to check roll again real quick, the people that came to the second session. So when I call your name, raise your hand, leave it up, and then when I'm all done, you can go and have a great day. So I see Cecil. Cecil, can you raise your hand and leave it up? Kayla. Kendra. Christina, um, good, Natalie, Samira, Stephanie Garza, Temperance, Vanessa, and that's all I see. Is there anybody's name I did not call? Okay. Well, thank you guys for coming today. And um, this, remember, I've, I've recorded this, although I'm going to stop the recording right now.